Due to technical problems, I'm recording this part for the third time now. So um, everything is pre-written now. And um, I will show you with my mouse uh, where I where, where I am, and I will just comment on what is already there. Uh, maybe I'll do this for all of today. And if it works out, I'm going to continue this way next week. Um, this would make the videos a little bit shorter. And I promise that I won't use that to uh, cram more stuff into the lectures, but rather to make the lectures in themselves a little bit shorter. So now we're starting chapter three of the lecture, regularization. And uh, first of all, I would like to sum up uh, what we learned, what we saw in the numerical example at the end of chapter two. Now we were looking at uh, the inverse problems kf equals g and uh, k are the, uh, we assumed that the singular value decomposition of k is known. The singular system is sigma k u k v k. Oops, maybe I should show you my mouse. Hope you should see it now. Okay. Uh, the singular system is sigma k uh, v u k and v k. And uh, we assume that g is uh, in the domain of k plus. So k plus g is defined, which means that this series actually converges. OK, the problem was uh, uh, we don't know exactly what g is, but we only have an approximation g delta. And the only thing that's known is that it's not too far away from the true data, meaning that the norm of g minus g delta is uh, smaller or equal to delta. And g delta is the approximation that we have. Now we're facing two problems. First problem is, um, well, the k plus g delta might not even be defined um, because uh, we might leave the domain. And uh, the second thing is, even if it is uh, defined, k plus is discontinuous. So uh, that means uh, small errors uh, would lead to large errors in the result. Our remedy for that, uh, our solution, was to replace k plus by a similar operator, namely by leaving out all the sum or all the terms in the sum over here for which um, the error amplification factor was too big, meaning we leave out all uh, parts or all terms where one over sigma k is large or where sigma k is small. Now, if we formalize that, this means that we are still taking the sum as above, but we are restricting ourselves to those singular values that are larger or equal to some threshold parameter alpha, which we choose dependent on the error level delta, which we have to know, and uh, the data g delta that we have. OK, so this defines an operator k alpha plus g, uh, k alpha plus. And of course, if we apply it to g delta, then this is what comes out. Now, since uh, we proved that uh, for an infinite singular system, and finite uh, singular systems are, are not relevant, so um, we'll always look at infinite systems. For infinite systems, the singular values converge to 0. So that means that this sum which we have here is finite, which uh, means that uh, it's always well defined on all of x. And also, it's continuous. Now, um, what is the what, what is the, the mode of operation? Uh, we have the error level delta. We have the approximation g delta. We choose an alpha. And then we apply the the um, the um, uh, we apply k alpha plus to that g delta, and that's the approximation. That's an approximation for our true uh, solution f plus, which would have been k plus g. So uh, we get an approximation here, and uh, we can. For these operators, k alpha plus, we can even give the norm 
uh, in this simple case, uh, because I mean, what we have here is uh, the singular value decomposition of K alpha plus, and of course the norm is the maximum singular uh, value. And that's of course one over sigma k, but uh, one over sigma k for the largest sigma k that comes up, for the smallest sigma k that comes up. And since all the sigma k's are larger than alpha, we have that the norm of k alpha plus is smaller or equal to one over alpha. Okay, so it's definitely continuous. Now, uh, before we define this, um, let me just very briefly discuss what that means. Um, we would like to compute f plus, which would be k plus g. We are only able to compute an approximation f delta plus um, and inserting, in injecting a k alpha plus g, uh, we can write this, uh, we can bound this, oh, this should be small or equal to, of course, oops. So uh, we can bound this by k alpha plus g delta minus k alpha plus g plus k alpha plus g minus k plus g. Now, uh, so the difference between the approximation and the real thing is bounded by the sum of these two. And um, now, of course, this is nothing but k alpha plus times g delta minus g. So this can be bounded by the norm of k alpha plus, which we showed to be finite, times delta. So this first term is more or less the, the impact of the error on the uh, on the value or uh, on the on the value of the approximation, right? So the the, the smaller the error, the smaller this term over here is. Now the second term over here, that's k alpha plus g minus k plus g. Well, that's the error, the premium that we have to pay for using the wrong operator. We didn't use k plus; we used an approximation, k alpha plus. And uh, the um, this over here is k alpha plus minus k plus ap applied to g. That's the difference between these two operators. So that's what we. So that's the the error we um, generate by using the wrong operator. In this simple, very simple case, we can even say what this operator is. Um, it's of course just the missing terms in the series, and so that's uh, the sum over all k sigma k smaller than alpha one over sigma k g and v k times u k. Okay, uh, from this description, you already see the the error um, consists of two parts. First part due to the error, due to the error in the data. Second part. Due to the uh, due to the fact that we're using the wrong operator, we somehow will have to balance these two, so that alpha will have to be chosen very 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 wisely. Um, for example, if we have delta equal to zero, there's no point in going to any alpha plus. We can just use the sum. Uh, um, if we have error-free data, noise-free data, we can just use the sum and just um, use k plus. So for delta equals uh, delta equals zero, um, we would like we would just use k plus, right? So that uh, so alpha would be zero in this case. Um, if um, De delta is large, then uh, we would like k alpha plus to be relatively small because that's the error amplification factor then, and we would like this to be small. So uh, in that case, we would probably choose alpha relatively large so that the norm of the operator is uh, not too large. So the error amplification here is is bounded, is not uh, is not getting um, is not getting big. But that, of course, means if alpha is, uh, is chosen large, then this over here will uh, be large as well. And uh, um, so this term may get small, but this term may get large. And of course, what you will want to do is you will want to balance those two. On the other hand, if delta is uh, non-vanishing, but is very small, we could allow for a little bit more of error amplification. So we would use, we would choose alpha a little bit smaller, and then 
this one this error would get smaller uh, again so so you you see that um this is one of the problems uh, this is one of the big uh, hurdles in uh, inverse problems you have to choose this uh, this per parameter which is called the regularization parameter wisely and it's not so easy because for example g of course is completely unknown right so um that will be something we have to deal with okay um but let me give the definition of a regularization first. And it's just a formalization of what I already said. So we're looking at the inverse problem of Kf uh, uh, equals G, K an operator from X to Y. And uh, we have a, a family of operators K alpha plus, here's the alpha. And they are all in red because uh, I wrote K gamma first, but K alpha is the normal choice. And uh, so uh, I corrected that. It's a family of operators K alpha plus. Think of the K alpha plus above, where uh, alpha is a regularization parameter, usually from, no, uh, it's always in R plus. Uh, and uh, K alpha plus it should be an approximation to K plus. So it should be an operator from Y to X. And it's called a regularization of K plus if and only if, and now for the rest think that G is fixed uh, in the domain of K plus. Um, then uh, we would like uh, this um, this uh, regularization to give a good approximation to uh, the 2k plus g. And so uh, what we would like to have is um, uh, we uh, the um, the approximation that um, that uh, the, the that we computed above was um, first we choose a regularization parameter. So there must be some rule, some, um, some um, choice rule that depends on alpha or on delta and G delta. So we choose the regularization parameter. We apply K plus with that regularization parameter to G delta. And then the difference between the approximation, that's the, the approximation that we computed above, then the approximation should not be too bad. So the norm between K plus G and that approximation should be small in some sense. And of course, that should not depend on the measurement. So um, we would like to allow here all measurements that, uh, that satisfy the condition that they're not too far away from the two measurement. Okay, so um, this is valid for one delta and uh, one g, and now of course what we would uh, what we would like to have is that if we have a sequence of measurements where the error goes to zero, then we would also like to have that uh, the the approximations that we get also tend uh, uh, that the approximations that we converge towards the minimum norm solution, K plus applied to G. Okay, so what we would like to have is that the uh, limiting value for delta equals to zero of this error that we have here is zero. Then uh, one norming thing, um, if we fix G, then uh, I would like to have that if we let delta converge to zero, uh, then, um, um, I would also like alpha to converge to zero. That's just a normation. And that more or less means that K zero plus should be equal to K plus. So if, we, if I choose alpha equal to zero, then it should get, uh, it should formally to zero, then it should be the original operator. Uh, one additional thing, um, when alpha is not dependent on G delta, but just an alpha is an alpha of delta, then uh, we call this a, a, a priori choice, and uh, that's something that happens very often. Now, um, I gave you this example uh, of uh, regularization, 
which is also for obvious reasons called truncated SVD. That's not the only one uh, in the, uh, we will get to know a lot of regularizations. And uh, in fact, the uh, uh, truncated SVD is, is, is a very bad choice that's uh, almost never used. And the reason is simply what I already mentioned. Um, the SVD is never used for computation and there's no way of implementing this other than first computing the SVD and then uh, employing it, applying it in exactly the way I just showed you. There's an alternative definition of, um, uh, of uh, regularization and you can easily see that's exactly the same one. Um, let uh, if um, uh, <laughs> assume what I just said, uh, you have a series of measurements that become better and better. So the difference between this measurement and uh, the uh, the true um, the, the true outcome G is in the norm smaller than delta n, and delta n is a sequence that goes to zero. So that means your measurements get more and more exact. And then of course you would expect that uh, the, um, that, uh, the, um, the approximations that you get, oops, the approximations that you get uh, converge to the true solution. So converge to the minimum norm solution. And uh, if that is true for every series with this, uh, with this property, then K alpha plus is a regularization. And of course, also the other, other, hand, uh, other way around, if K alpha plus is a regularization with the definition we just had, then this sequence over here converges to K plus G. So more or less, this just says the better you measure, the better measurements you have, uh, the better your approximations will be, the, the better the approximations of K plus G will be, and that's something we would definitely expect. Uh, one last remark. Um, if alpha does not depend on delta, but is just a function of G delta, then uh, you can easily show that K plus is continuous. Um, I think you will do that in the homework. And um, that means the parameter choice uh, must depend on delta, so um, we need to know an error level, otherwise that uh, regularization will not be possible.